Minä sama Jokoso. Arvoisat juhlavieraat, Demurog herrar, minä damer herrar, meine damen und herren, damer monsieur, signore e signori, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, welcome to the ribbon cutting ceremony of the Buffalo AKG Art Museum. Buffalo AKG 
have aspired to uplift our community by building a museum of and for the people. A museum without walls that segregate, separate, and tie down the human spirit and imagination. We have dreamt of the moment when people from diverse backgrounds can walk unhindered through the doors of a new museum, one that harnesses the full measure of its historic legacy, along with all the potential it holds for the future. Knitting together the hard work and dedication of hundreds of staff members, board members, volunteers, community partners, elected officials, donors, family members, and many others. Dear friends, this day is now upon us. It is with excitement, with humility and gratitude that I welcome you to this gathering of people, a celebration that inaugurates a new chapter in the storied history of an organization that was incorporated in 1862 during the brutal and bloody American Civil War. In front of you, you see the Jeffrey E. Gunlock Building, a brilliant, ingenious structure designed by Shohei Shigematsu and his team at OMA in collaboration with Jason Cataret and his team at Cooper Robertson, a structure conceived, co-created, and willed into being by hundreds of people from all walks of life. To your right, you see two historic buildings, the neoclassical Robert and Elizabeth Wilmer's building designed by E.B. Green and the modernist Seymour H. Knox building designed by Gordon Bunshaft. These fully renovated and refurbished jewels in Buffalo's necklace of architectural marbles represent many layers of history and moments of significant becoming in the history of this institution. We are joined today by members of the history-making families whose names now adorn the structures on our campus and the name of our museum. Thank you to Jean Knox, Seymour H. Knox IV, Northrop R. Knox IV, and the descendants of John J. Albright for being with us for this historic moment. <laughs> the work that my colleagues and I do would not be possible without generations of curators and directors. We stand on the shoulders of giants. With us today are my predecessors, Douglas Schultz and Louis Grachos, as well as senior curator Cheryl Brutman, former chief curator Doug Reichspoon, as well as former deputy directors Karen Spaulding and Jolyn Hill, who have moved mountains so that this museum could flourish. Thank you so much for being with us today. Visitors to the Knox Building will enter into the Rolf C. Wilson Jr. Town Square, a new community space where we just had breakfast that is generously supported by the Rolf C. Wilson Jr. Foundation. We are honored to have Mary Wilson here with us today. Mary, where are you, Mary? There you are, Mary. Mary, thank you for continuing Rolf's incredible philanthropic legacy. The Rolf Wilson Town Square is enclosed by Common Sky, an artwork designed by Ulifer Eliasson and Sebastian Behemann of Studio Other Spaces, and realized through the ingenious vision of Bernard Harner and his team at Harner Technique. Common Sky is one of the three major site-specific artists' commissions on the Buffalo AKG campus. In Cornelia, the Buffalo AKG's new restaurant, visitors will be able to experience Fierle Bias' stunning mosaic chorus of the deep. And later this summer, the spiral staircase from the basement level to the first floor of the Gunlock building will be adorned with Others Will Know by the Swedish artist Miriam Beckstrom. Connecting the old with the new, just east of the Gunlock building, your eyes will catch the sinuous line and reflective skin of the John J. Albright Bridge, a bridge that traces the path we have traversed while also pointing towards our shared future. The Buffalo AKG has always been a bit of a rebel, precociously seeking out 
even defining the artistic revolutions of tomorrow alongside artists and other creative spirits who are the wellspring, wellspring of the brave, the new, and the radical. One of those artists, Ursula von Rudingsford, is here with us today. Ursula's striking sculpture, Black and Word, is now installed on the second floor sculpture terrace of the Gunlock building. Thanks to our new state-of-the-art 21st century campus, we now have the opportunity to empower people to dream big, to actualize and activate in welcoming spaces their own creativity through the transformative power of art. In a nutshell, we are gathered here today to celebrate both what has been and what will be and might be human achievements and human potential. The Buffalo AKG is more than just a repository of glorious objects, in our case, a world-renowned collection of modern and contemporary art. It is also more than just a vehicle that moves art and people vertically and horizontally. We are a community gathering space, a welcoming hub of creative energies for everyone, a place of memory and of inspiration, a house of muses, a museum. On behalf of all of us who have dedicated our lives to this human temple, I thank each and every one of you for being here with us today. I am now honored and delighted to introduce the talented students of the choir of the Buffalo Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts. They will perform Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey's duet when you believe, arranged by the vocal group Pentatonics and under the direction of Lorianne Stevens. <coughs> Students of the Buffalo Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts, the floor is yours. <laughs>
speak after that. Thank you for your voice and for your words. You truly inspire us. Dear friends, I want to draw your attention to the first word in our 21st century name, a name that harkens back to our identity as the Buffalo Fine Arts Academy, which remains our legal designation still today. Buffalo has returned to Buffalo. The Buffalo Fine Arts Academy is henceforth the Buffalo Albright Knox Gunlock Art Museum, or the Buffalo AKG for short. This return of the Buffalo was the request made by one man, a man who is proud to call Buffalo his hometown. This extraordinary, visionary, courageous individual visited the museum as a child with his mother, Carol. I don't think anyone could have predicted the ripple effects those childhood visits would have on our community. We are here today thanks to Jeffrey E. Gunlock. His unprecedented generosity catalyzed this project. Through a series of matching challenges, Mr. Gunlock has contributed a stunning $65 million to the becoming of the Buffalo AKG Art Museum. And more than that, he has given to us, to all of us, his vision, his belief in the importance of art, as well as his faith in Buffalo as a world-class city. With these gifts, this remarkable man has ensured that Buffalo's future will be so bright, you might as well invest in a set of new sunglasses. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor, my privilege, and my pleasure to introduce Jeffrey E. Gunlock. Anything in New York State 50 miles outside of New York City, they think it's Canada. So if there are any Manhattanites here in the room, welcome to Canada. <laughs> Is the fact that Manhattanites totally dismiss Buffalo due to their being elitist snobs? Maybe that's part of it. But no, Buffalo being dismissed, disregarded for most of our lifetimes, because Buffalo hasn't flexed any muscle for most of our lifetimes. Because Buffalo didn't have much muscle to flex. Hey, I was at the Darwin Martin House yesterday, and they even tore down the pergola and the conservatory in 1962. That golly has been rebuilt. It's a stunning sight. It's interesting that that was destroyed in 1962, which is the year that the Seymour Knox building was built. Isn't that odd? Also, the Darwin Martin House was built in 1905, same year as the Wilmers building. In fact, E.B. Green, the architect of the Wilmers building, lived across the street from the Darwin Martin House, and that building is still there. And it's a great study in contrast to think that this building and that sort of arts and crafts type of building are, are the same, uh, or built at the same time. It's weird how these things are intersecting, you know? 1962, 1905, Darwin Martin, E.B. Green, Knox Building. Strange coincidence, it's almost like that five degrees of separation about Kevin Bacon. Everybody like, knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. In fact, I actually flew on a plane next to Kevin Bacon. <laughs> it just made it even weirder. He was, he was reading Dr. Dan, the Band-Aid Man, to his son, who was probably about two years old. So Buffalo didn't have much muscle to flex, and it's easy to disregard. Not anymore. Not anymore. So any man 
headlights in the room, welcome to Buffalo. <laughs> and now, let me say the seven words that I've been waiting seven years to say. Welcome to the Buffalo AKG Art Museum. <laughs>
We gave him to the Buffalo AKG Art Museum. <laughs> and if you want to walk through uh, the collection, you'll see many masterpieces that say Goodyear on them. And I don't think he gave them all at once, but he gave them uh, over time. You know, the arc of this institution has been essentially sequential baton passes of contributions. And I guess somebody up there decided that the baton should be passed to me. And let me tell you something. At times, that baton feels more like a piano. <laughs> so here we are. So people ask me, am I happy with the museum? Just like I'm sure they asked Shohei, are you proud of this museum? Because I know people don't know what to say. They just want to say thank you. Uh, but let me tell you what the answer is. I'm very happy with this campus, the new building, and I'm very proud of the building that Shohei has created. People ask me, sort of, why did you do this? And I started collecting art decades ago. And I always wanted to own a painting by Piet Mondrian. And I did buy one that was a 1936 picture. It's got a double line on it. That's the name of my company. It makes a good logo. <laughs> and when I was contemplating that painting, I talked to a specialist, a friend of mine, who's also a Mondrian aficionado. And I said, let's go through the book from the National Gallery Show, which is kind of the book on uh, Mondrian. It's got many, many, many photos in it. And I said, let's go through it and see which ones are not in museums. They're in private collections that they might possibly be sold someday in the future. And we went through the book and got to this certain page. And I said to my friend there, I said, that's the one. And he said, oh, I totally, totally agree. That's terrific. I know where it is. It's fantastic. It's in Switzerland. It's not for sale right now, but you're right, it's great. And then about 14 years later or so, it came up for auction. And I couldn't believe it, because somehow it found its way, at least potentially, to me. And I knew I was going to have to go crazy. When you buy very high value art, I always say you have to be the crazy guy, because you're never going to get anything really great at a bargain. So you have to go in there knowing that you're going to bid against some Chinese billionaire or the museum of Qatar. And these people, they, they, they play for keeps. So I ended up buying the picture. And for once, after uh, dropping a lot of money on a painting, I woke up the next morning without buyer's remorse. I was actually still thrilled about the whole thing. And I said to myself, this is so strange. What a weird feeling. I feel like maybe what Sir Edmund Hillary must have felt when he climbed Mount Everest. You know, what mountain do you climb next? So I was thinking, well, I own my favorite painting by my favorite artist. So what am I supposed to do next? I mean, I can go out and buy another uh, high value piece of burlap with grease on it, which is essentially what all the paintings are, although they're made important because they're human. Um, and no one will see it. And buy another grease on burlap that nobody will see in my lifetime, or we can do something like this and change the entire movie. <laughs> this outcome for Buffalo and the world. things a little bit. I believe in leading by example, and it came to me that if I figured if I didn't lead this project, who would? And so, to all of you who contributed to the AK360 campaign, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And be proud. Be proud of giving and giving, which seems so often absent in our world of take, 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 that we seem to be living in today.
Many people have sincerely thanked me for my role in this, I think the Buffalo News called it, stunning accomplishment. Interesting to see what the New York Times says. They had a pretty nice article in the Sunday supplement, or the Sunday uh, Times a month or so ago. And I appreciate the thanks, uh, so sincerely. But the way to thank me is to make Buffalo and the world just a little bit better. Thank me by giving more and taking less. One. Welcome, once again, to the Buffalo AKG Art Museum. Thank you very much. so much, Jeffrey. Thank you for everything. I have learned and continue to learn so much from you, and I appreciate every conversation that we have. Now, I am pleased to introduce Alice Jacobs, the president of the Buffalo AKG's board of directors. Alice's tenure as board president has been marked by her deep and abiding commitment to the communities of Western New York and to the principles of inclusion, diversity, accessibility, and equity. At every turn, Alice walks the walk, and she has led the board and this museum to a place where community-focused thinking underscores our operations, programs, and initiatives. Alice, it has been a pleasure and continues to be a pleasure to work with you and to serve alongside you. Please join me in welcoming Board President Alice Jacobs. Thank you. First of all, I can't believe we're here, as many of you can. So it's just, um, it's an amazing day. Thank you, everyone, for being here and for being a part of it. Thank you, Yane, for your kind and generous words, but most of all, for your tenaciousness, vision, and unbounding dedication to art and what art means for the world, as well as for the transformation to the Buffalo AKG Art Museum. Flourishing as an exceptional hub of artistic and creative energies that enriches and transforms people's lives in our community, our nation, and the world. This is the grand vision that has guided the board, the staff, and all who've been a part of this project throughout this time. All of you under this tent, from longtime members to new patrons, have not only believed in us, but have also been a vital part of making today happen. One of the countless things I learned throughout this process was that museums were not originally established as places of collective memory or places to inspire the future. Guests were granted access at the pleasure of the owner who was able to show off the treasures that they had brought from abroad or elsewhere. Today, our vision reflects a museum as a place to share content, <coughs> inspire creativity, hear and understand different perspectives, and forge connections with each other, serving as a dynamic force for positive change in our community, inviting and welcoming everyone through our doors. I could not be prouder to be a part of our history at this time, of this time in our history, which encompasses not only an amazing physical transformation, but also a willingness to learn how we become a meaningful partner to our entire community. Acting not only within our walls, but engaging beyond them through collaborations in our own backyard and beyond, the AKG has embraced this model. Our unique partnership with the city and the county to bring public art to our region our work with the Buffalo Public Schools, our temporary home at AK Northland, the AKG Art Truck have all served to strengthen the ties between this museum and its communities. I'm incredibly grateful for my fellow board members who share this passion 
for seeing the museum as a true community partner, as well as being a major art institution nationally and internationally. The work of previous boards, and especially the leadership of past board presidents, Charles Baldock, Charlie Banta, Leslie Zemsky, and Tom Hyde have made all of this possible. The trifecta of our internationally recognized art collection are soon to be world-renowned campus and the many special individuals who commit to this institution as a staff, volunteers, supporters, and visitors alike combine to create a museum that any place in the world would be proud to call its hometown art museum. While Buffalo is a place of culture and creativity may have been a well-kept secret for a long time, after today we know the word will definitely be out. Before we move to the next part of the program, I have a few thank yous are in order. We are really grateful to the generations of past philanthropists who created and sustained the Albright Knox Art Gallery for over 160 years. Today, in becoming the Buffalo AKG, we also welcome many new philanthropists who are committed to the idea that museums are much more than the art on their walls. Thank you to the 2,767 donors who contributed to our capital campaign, 1,758 of which are entirely new to this museum. I think this speaks to the belief in a vision of culture as an integral part of a healthy and vibrant community. Next, the group of individuals that make up the staff have spent countless hours, meetings, sleepless nights facing extraordinary and certainly unexpected challenges like a little thing called COVID during construction. <laughs> I've been honored to both learn from, help lead, share special moments, and forge forward no matter what the circumstances. To these individuals, thank you is not enough. Each of you will forever be at the forefront of our minds as the true spirit of the AKG. Thank you. There are two things I've learned from among the many things from all the time spent planning the Buffalo AKG Museum. If your vision inspires people, you can make it happen. Even if people think you're a little bit crazy when you say you plan to raise more than $230 million. But we did get that done. And second, Yane will achieve whatever goal he puts his mind to. A better partner in the pursuit of excellence could not be found. Through thick and thin, good times and bad, all of which we have had throughout this process, your passion, leadership, and friendship have propelled us all to greater heights. Thank you. Yanni's partner in all things, Sonia. <laughs> Sonia has worked tirelessly beside all of us on behalf of the AKG, as well as, their, as Yanni and Sonia's children, Gabriella, Jonathan, and Sophie, who are just as much a part of the team. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, when I moved to Buffalo for love 30 years ago, I never could have believed that I'd be standing here today. I'm sorry. Thank you to my husband, Jerry, and my children, Melissa and Justin, and the entire Jacobs family, whose steadfast commitment to Western New York drives my passion in leading this project. Thank you. Young singers who we heard from earlier have been working with an incredible vocal group from the United Kingdom, Vox Futura. 
I am so excited to hear what they have prepared for us. Please join me in welcoming the students of the Buffalo Academy for Visual and Performing Arts again, and Vox Rotura to the stage.
So we're so happy to be a place that brings um, international and local talent together uh, so they can learn from each other and, and provide incredible experiences like that. So now I'd like to introduce someone who has from the beginning known the importance of listening to our community for the Buffalo AKG to be a reality. Shohei Shigematsu and his team not only understood the assignment of pursuing a monumental expansion to this campus, but also recognized that to be successful, we sought to include much more than new walls and new grass. Sho flew across the world to attend 12 different community meetings before even beginning an architectural sketch. And of course, one of them was during a huge snowstorm. Hearing from all different sectors of Western New York, attempting to incorporate the dreams and visions and challenges that make up our community, working towards the idea that the walls of the museum serve to bring our entire community in. Meanwhile, inside the walls, Show's design has transformed and built spaces that will encourage visitors to use the shared experience of reflecting on art to understand each other and our world better, as well as to allow our collection to really sing. I'm grateful to my fellow board members that for believing to find new successes, we needed to try a different approach, leading in partnership with our architect to create this campus. Shohei, you've helped us move our vision forward and create a legacy of thoughtfulness, beauty, and inspiration that we will steward for generations to come. Like Yane, you are a ten tenacious, passionate, and dedicated partner. I cannot imagine a greater partnership than that which the AKG shares with you. Thank you, Shohei, and please welcome me in welcome in joining join me in welcoming Shohei Shigematsu. Good afternoon. I'm Shohei Shigematsu from OMA. Um, I prepared a note, but I try not to read because I think there was enough thank you and acknowledgement, which I will, but I uh, would like to be very natural today. Um, as an architect dealing with like art world, art field, I'm often asked, what is the future of museum? Or what is the future of the art? What is the future of architecture? And I think you see the future there. Um, <laughs> Not just there, I think you, your assets, your diversity of buildings, landscapes, great collection, that really defines uh, the future of the museum, but also, of course, a great community. And you can see the succession of culture coming from Jeffrey's mother to Jeffrey. Now, I'm sure this complex will inspire other generation to uh, add another campus or another building somewhere uh, uh, and create another, uh, you know, great uh, cultural contribution. So for me, the future of the museum is to create a platform so that this cultural engagement, the community engagement, is visible more than ever. As you can see, of course, it represents the time that the EB Green building was relatively inward focused, great gallery space, uh, bush shaft extension introduced notion of gathering in a beautiful auditorium with a beautiful courtyard. But now, that wasn't enough. So we made a perfect gallery space to exhibit their amazing collection, but enveloped that with a glazing so that you can enjoy a beautiful buffalo weather uh, while we are also in the building, and you can see we had already done a sculpture exhibition, and you see how transparent the building is in contrast to the existing buildings, and creates diversity of space. Um, the Olafur's roof and our veil that covers the sculpture terrace is somewhat really representing the time that we live in now, where gathering and exchanging ideas is the museum's mission, not just uh, looking at art. And I think you are the first uh, city, and this is the first building to 
really directly address that. Uh, so I really like to congratulate you, and I was, you know, buff people in Buffalo welcomed us as part of your family from day one, uh, and that was very crucial for our operation. Thank you. Um, so, other things I wanted to say. Um, where you're sitting here is, uh, used to be surface parking. Do you remember? You can't really already imagine how it was, right? You couldn't see a building, you saw only the highway beyond. Now you see the building. But when you go up to the third floor, you will see the uh, axis of Elmwood, you see the city hall, and also, this, also the history museum. So you will, this building is really addressing this kind of, uh, you know, city view and the connections that you had already. And you see all the towers sticking out from uh, the data of Buffalo, and which is also never seen before from this area, as well as a view to the park. You see the beautiful bridge, you see the reflection of the history onto a new building. This is what's kind of unexpected to be honest, but somehow it's really showing the uh, <laughs> diversity uh, of the place. <laughs> um, the marble is cleaned up. You will see the gallery space inside the, the Wilmers building with a great wooden floor. You know this uh, staircase, big stair in front of it was destroyed when the uh, extension happened. So we put it back to have uh, some kind of amphitheater-like space where uh, that to, uh, to accommodate with great hall. So you can imagine a lot of performance could still happen over there. And you know the rest, there's the underground parking. So you please come here even in the, uh, slightly bad weather. Um, <laughs> so I, I really wanted to thank you all. And, uh, Everyone is thanking everyone, so, but of course, uh, now I'm going to read the notes. Um, so, AKG team, of course, uh, Yane, Jilly, and Kathleen, Jamie, Holly, Woody, uh, you name it. Um, and Yane, thank you. I mean, this, he, he prohibits me saying this, but uh, we start when we were selected. Yane invited me to his uh, grandfather's. Uh, cottage outside in the Finnish woods. There is a big sauna with a lot of beers next to it. <laughs> and we had a great moment spending with his family inside sauna, drinking beers, not his children, but us <laughs> drinking beer. And then jumping into the lake, like, and then coming out and discussing the future of the museum there. <laughs> That's what you see here. But uh, <laughs> I would like to uh, then uh, have end, end, not end, but continue our kind of uh, you know leisure uh, friendship too. I would like to invite you to Japanese onsen for the first time, so that you can relax a little bit. <laughs> and of course, Jeffrey Barbara, I still remember we first went to LA to present to you the model with a big model which didn't really go through your uh, conference door. Um, <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for embracing our vision. And you saw like how great the visionary his speech was. Uh, it was always, we, we felt like there was always a kind of back backup from you. And that was very important for us to uh, design something this complex. Uh, of course, uh, Alex and the board of directors, uh, project committee, and everyone in Buffalo. Again, this was a community success, not not uh, a single person or a single entity success. So congratulations. And I really hope that uh, you can see the buildings, abundance of spaces where you can experiment, do many things. So. This is not the end. This is the beginning, uh, uh, the new beginning of the institution. So congratulations and thank you so much and keep in touch. Thank you.
good to get up once in a while to keep circulation going. Thank you, Shohei. Thank you for your and your team's brilliance, determination, and for your Sisu. We could not have asked for a better partner than you and your team in this enormous undertaking. Now I am pleased to introduce one of the Buffalo AKG's most steadfast supporters in elected office. For many years, Congressman Brian Higgins has championed Western New York and this museum on the national stage. Congressman Higgins' most recent achievement was to secure one million in federal funding for the great lawn on which we now sit. Please join me in welcoming Congressman Brian Higgins. Jacobs, Knox family, Gunlock family, and if there's anybody here from the Albright family, we welcome and thank you as well. Uh, it is said by the late great American narrative historian David McCullough that the most unique art form in the world is architecture because we live in it and amongst us. It defines us as a neighborhood and a civilization. These buildings are beautiful, as has been said. This building was supposed to be built for the Pan American Exposition in 1901. It wasn't completed until 1905. This has 102 columns. The only other building that has more is the Capitol building in our nation's capital, in Washington, D.C. It is said also in urban design that the built environment is never neutral. It either serves to hurt or to heal. Today is a day of healing. The Buffalo Albright Knox Gunlock Art Museum is nearly $200 million of glass and marble as a work of art in and of itself. It took nearly three and a half years during that time, we lost over 3,000 Erie County residents because of disease. 50,000 square feet of gallery space, 430 pieces of art on display. The artists, Frida Kahlo, one of the most admired artists from Mexico in the 20th century. She transcended a life of suffering through her art. Stricken with polio at the age of six, she fractured her spine, broke her collarbone, and fractured her legs 11 times, and endured personal setbacks. Even a hero would have been begged to have been spared. Kalo wrote, quote, I paint self-portraits because I paint my own identity. I lost three children. I struggled with chronic pain. I am not sick. I am broken. Frida Kahlo's self-portrait is on exhibit here at the AKG Art Museum. Vincent van Gogh, 19th century Dutch painter, one of the most influential painters in Western art history. He was unknown during life. He became famous after his death. He created more than 2,000 arts of work. Van Gogh also struggled with anger and alcoholism. He suffered with severe mental illness and self-doubt. His friendship with the French painter Paul Gauguin ended after a confrontation with a razor blade. When? In a rage, Van Gogh's severed part of his own left ear. Van Gogh shot himself in 1890 and died two days later. Vincent Van Gogh's The Old Mill and Paul Gauguin's The Spirit of the Dead Watching is exhibited here at this art museum. The artist sees shapes, colors, tone, 
and texture to convey what can't be said in words. The most powerful voice in art is silence. It's what you make of it and how that artist can convey to you a powerful message. The sixth century Greek tragic poets said that we suffer our way to wisdom. We suffer our way to wisdom. To live is to suffer. To endure the suffering is to give the suffering meaning. This city went through hell this past year with COVID, a vile shooting of our own people on the east side of Buffalo, difficult weather where we lost people, a consequence of climate change. But we're enduring. We're enduring. We're resilient. We're good people. This is a good city on a good day to make a great announcement about an extraordinary addition to our humanity as a city. I used to teach history and economics across the street. And they let me write and teach a course called the Economic History of Western New York. And Jeffrey spoke that Buffalo lost his muscle. And he's right. Buffalo did lose its muscle. But at the beginning of the 20th century, the end of the 19th century, all the great architects, Henry Hobson Richardson, Frank Lloyd Wright, Louis Sullivan, Daniel Burnham, Richard Upjohn, Louise Bethune, the first female architect in the United States, they weren't from Buffalo. They came to Buffalo because this is a city that had a confidence in itself to say to these, to say to these artistic people, you can get your vision turned into something real, something tangible that will define us forever. Jeffrey Gunlock, your gift to this community is as important as your confidence in this community. And on behalf of a grateful community, we thank you for your work. So today is a day to give thanks for many things. I thank you for the opportunity that you give me to represent this community in the United States Congress. We give thanks to John Albright, Seymour Knox, to Jeffrey Gunlock, for the beautiful gift that they've given to this community, only for the people in the community that they love. And finally, we give thanks to a good and generous nation, a good and generous nation that makes this day and all of our days possible. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Congressman Higgins, for your words and for your years of support. In 2021, we launched the AKG Nordic Art and Culture Initiative, a new and unique transatlantic platform in North America for the art and artists of the Nordic region. I flew, I think, 24 times between Buffalo and the Nordic region on empty planes. American green card got me back, a Finnish passport got me there. The global response to the initiative has far exceeded our expectations. Already, only in the second year of the initiative, we have made many new friends around the world and have acquired several exciting new artworks by Nordic artists into our collection. One such friend is Nicholas Hannigan, Consul General of Iceland. Consul General Hannigan is here with us today, along with colleagues from the diplomatic missions of Finland, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. Please join me in welcoming Consul General Nicholas Hannigan, who will speak on behalf of the Nordic Council of Ministers for Culture. Uh, distinguished uh, uh, guests, uh, friends, as Consul General of Iceland in New York, and uh, as Janne said, representing the uh, presidency of the Nordic Council of Ministers. It's a great honor, and I have to say I feel some humility in uh, having the, being uh, permitted to, to speak here on this magnificent occasion. Um, 
it's a great, great honor to speak on behalf of the Nordic region, and I'm very happy to have my uh, Nordic uh, fellow consuls general here from New York today. First of all, many congratulations to Buffalo, uh, to um, uh, Janne Siren, particularly, and his magnificent team. Uh, we count it a huge honor, I have to say, uh, to be closely connected to this magnificent museum uh, through the Buffalo AKG Nordic Art and Culture Initiative. This initiative is a beacon for international culture and economic partnership. Uh, indeed, it represents the first permanent bridgehead in, the, in North America uh, for contemporary art and culture from the Nordic region. Now, it's been said, uh, and rightly I think, that art and international relations have so much to say to each other if they only knew it. They are both about rethinking the world so that we can live together in it and with ourselves. And of course, the fact is artists are much better at this than practitioners of international relations. As the same writer says, we tend to us underestimate the generative power of art, perhaps even the regenerative power of art, its capacity to nourish thought and sustain hope. Now, given the ch challenges we face today in today's world, commitment to international artistic collaboration is far-sighted indeed. So the pan-Nordic group of founding patrons showed not only generosity, but also far-sightedness in developing this unique pathway for international partnership. And I would like to pay tribute to the work of Helga, Helga Christoffersen, curator of the Nordic Art and Culture Initiative, for her work in guiding the implementation. This magnificently renovated and expanded home to what we all know is one of the United States' uh, most significant uh, art collections uh, has already inter integrated into it a number of permanent elements by Nordic artists, notably by Miriam Backstrom, Ida Ekblad, and Oliver er Eliasson. But perhaps, uh, to me at least, perhaps the most remarkable aspect of this initiative is how future-focused it is. Laying down a time span of 60 years for fulfillment of the initiative is a statement of optimism and commitment that is rarely seen in our modern world. And maybe it is right that the world of art leads the way on this. The investment will catalyze the Nordic Initiative from 2022, last year, to 2082. This is truly visionary. Uh, dear distinguished guests and friends, finally, I would like to pay tribute to the individuals, corporations, and foundations who have stepped up and provided support to underpin the AKG Nordic Art and Culture Initiative. We look forward to the next 60 years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Consul General Hannigan. It is now my honor to introduce Itina Farid Cook, one of Buffalo's most creative and innovative voices. Itina is a poet photographer, filmmaker, and artist whose vision has the power to uplift all of us. In 2021, Itina co-curated the exhibition In These Truths. Itina has written a new work of art to mark today's special occasion. Please join me in welcoming Itina Farid Cook. I wrote this while standing on the edge of an island filled with green life, surrounded by the occasional harmony of the fowls within the air and the symphonic rhythm of natural flow of water in front of me. And I watched as this liquid organism continued to flow despite the existing barriers of stifling stones and decomposing debris, barriers that were both natural and man-made. In my curiosity, I step closer to the edge to see if I can get a glimpse of my existence within the running water. But I could not find my figure in its face. I could have halted my journey, however I took action. 
in search of my reflection. And while on this pursuit, an overwhelming thought came to mind, whether nature realized it or not, whether I saw myself reflected within the space or not, that my very presence was enough. I existed, I belonged. Reflection, the production of an image by or as if by a mirror, a process where we describe our learning, how it changed, and how it might relate to future learning experiences. So let us reflect. 1862, the birth of the Fine Arts Academy. A collection of men stood on the edge, staring into the waters of a time in which there wasn't much of a reflection of art within our city. Quote, Buffalo is to have a permanent art gallery at once. So they took action and combined their minds, money, and motives and began the search to create space in order to collect, preserve, and exhibit art. I'm sure the pursuit of this desire had its barriers, barriers that were both natural and man-made. But despite the stifling stones and decomposing debris, this dream grew. They must have known that such a sacrifice was worth the investment. The transformative power of the arts could be a force within that era. 1905, the Albright Art Gallery emerged out of hard work, persistence, and commitment. The goal was realized and the fruit of this pursuit continues to tackle artistic poverty since its conception. Throughout the years, this space has seen renovations, new additions, support, backlash, successes, and failures. See, change is not always met with open arms. However, today, this space has emerged into something that I'm sure is much different than what was anticipated. Now allow me to reflect. My first time walking into what was then called the Albright Knox Art Gallery was for a Buffalo Public School field trip. Even at a young age, I was intrigued by the language of art, fascinated by Picasso, captivated by Magritte, calmed by the chaotic collection of combined colors within the works of Jackson Pollock. Each piece with its own dialect spoke harmony to my soul and the symphonic compositions sang like jazz to my eyes. Even though I did not see myself within its waters or rather walls, I had a sense of belonging. Even during my years of study at Buffalo State, this space was sort of a temple of artistic calm. It was not always met with welcoming eyes. And at times, the behaviors towards me within this space made me question if I belonged. My graceful responses to ignorance resulted in the development of my overwhelming level of grit. Regardless of the behaviors of others, I satisfied my hunger for art and continued to be present. Present not as a victim in need to be saved, helped, or coddled, but as one with a fierce confidence and an understanding that I come from a place of privilege developed in the heart of Eden. I would ask my peers if they wanted to visit the gallery and the typical responses were, isn't that space for rich people? That space ain't for us, ain't no black people in there. I always tried to make the case that we, we would be there. That whether nature realized it or not, whether we saw ourselves reflected within the space or not, that our very presence was enough. We existed, we belonged. So here I am, still reflecting. Now let us reflect more in this present time. As I researched to develop this speech, I reviewed various literature and documents, images of the beginning times of the birth of this institution. I stood on the edge of the pages, piercing through the waters of words and images, and though not all of the faces I saw were a reflection of my literal figure, I still felt connected to the exhibited compassion, 
the persistence and commitment to preserve and share the beautiful art from within my city. This is one of the places where I taught my children to respect space. I taught my children to allow their actions to be like roses, both sharp, gentle, firm, and fierce, so that others have no choice but to respectfully be captivated. Throughout the years, I have seen this space undergo renovations, additions, with dedicated efforts to actively listen to the very community that they serve. This reflects not just within the structure of the building and the programs that they offer, but within the lives of the people, the people that have chosen to call this space sanctuary to work. Is it perfect? No. However, the foundation is being nurtured. It is more reflectant of who we all are. The work that lives within its walls showcases hard truths. In these truths, we find people like us, all of us, standing on the edge of this new island, piercing into the waters. We now see a reflection of the artist of our past and of our now. See, 10 men had a vision to create a space that was reflectant of their time. And now here we stand. This girl, woman now, had a vision to become more than she was told that she could be. Now here she stands. With their obvious differences, yet with the same grit, in pursuit of a desire that had its barriers, barriers that were both natural and man-made. But despite the stifling stones and decomposing debris, we are here. One city filled with infinite talent, a multitude of artistic minds, combination of highs and lows, wins and losses, beauty and pain. Whether nature realizes it or not, whether we see ourselves reflected within the space or not, that our very present is enough. We exist and we belong. We, together, are a collection of God's art, a magnificent human canvas, doing the best that we can with the paint that drips from our hearts to reflect culture, to reflect hope, to reflect love. See, I wonder, 60 years from now, from today, as we listen to the bell ring, <laughs> what will be reflected within the waters of this space that we now call Buffalo AKG Art Museum? Thank you so much. Honored guests, please welcome Majority Leader of the New York State Assembly, Crystal Peoples Stokes. Thank you, and good afternoon. Good afternoon. I trust everybody's doing well. I feel like I just have been through a really wonderful art history course. I hope that there are some faculty or staff from Buffalo State who got to hear some of this, because I can see a whole curriculum on art history built around what we've heard today and the history of this beautiful place right here in our view. I want to start like I generally do, is give all the honor and all the glory to God for seeing us through all of these difficult challenges that we have been through, yet we still see the beauty forging ahead of us. To all of the elected officials that are in the room, 
as well as those dignitaries who are from out of the country. It's good to see you all. I'm glad you're here. To all of you who came to celebrate this occasion with the AKG, and especially to Yanni and Alice, Mr. Gunlock, the Knox family, and the Albright family, what an amazing thing you all have added to the culture of Buffalo and Western New York. Cannot thank you enough. When I look out at you actually today, I can see in some of your eyes that same kind of twinkle that Bob Wilmer's had in his eyes. And he's the one who brought me to the top floor of m Bank when this Yanni's vision met Alice's inclusive thought leading capacities and said, Crystal, we have to figure out how to make this happen. He told me all about Mr. Gunluck and what he was going to do, but he said it's gonna require a commitment from the state government in significant numbers. And I'm, you know, Mr. Wilmers, I'm not sure why you're calling me. Um, <laughs> but, you know, he says, because you can do it, Crystal. Reminding what my mother and father used to always say, because my mother would never let us use the word can. She would always say, you can, you can, you can. And I, a little secretly agreed that, yeah, yeah, you know what, I can. So let me go talk to the speaker. And I did. And I spoke to the speaker on behalf of the entire Western New York delegation in the assembly. And I was like, this is something that I don't necessarily need, but our community needs this. This is important. When I told him about the gun list, and I told him about Yanni's vision, and Alice's capacity as a thought leader, I was like, we have to go with this. This is our opportunity. And by the way, I didn't want to have to come back and tell Bob Wilmers we couldn't do it. <laughs> so somewhere around 2016, Speaker Hasty came. Uh, and this museum graciously welcomed him through. We, we brought me a lot of delight, as I'm sure did my colleague at the time, John Ryan, who's now going on to the Senate. A lot of joy to point out art that we saw in that museum that I saw there as a kid coming from School 31. It gave me a, a lot of joy. And by the way, he actually recognized a lot of the art as well. So that's history. That happened. We worked to make that happen. And I'm glad that we did. This is an absolutely impressive end to a long journey. Super impressive. I mean, we went through a lot, no question. But through all of that, this still came through. This still happened. You understand supply shortages and COVID shut everything down and workers having a problem getting to work. Everything was difficult for the last couple of years. There's no one who had an easy life since COVID and after so far. But this still happened in the midst of all of that. So it really speaks volumes to the leadership of these folks who put all this together, put all the right people in the room, held all the public engagement meetings that included everybody's voice, not just from the West Side, not just from the influent, but from the entire community invested in Northland, actually used Northland as a location for the Albrights while you were building this. These things are set the precedent for where this place is going in the future. And honestly, I know it looks like it's landlocked, and I have been on the third floor of that beautiful structure, Mr. Chaudhry. Thank you very much for your design. It's stunning. And you may think that this is the end, of, for AKG, but I don't believe that for a minute. I think this is just a new beginning, I and mean, I'm excited to go with you. I certainly want to honor Ms. Wilson and the contributions that the Ralph Wilson Foundations have made here. We're good in Buffalo at football. We love football. We chant all the time, but we love culture too. We love the arts too. We love education too. We love the outdoors too. We love the environment too. This is an important message that's not just to the arts community, to the culture community, but to the environmental community as well. And for that, I think we should all shout. I mean, we've stood up a lot today when 
you know, we liked what people said. We were happy when they performed. And by the way, these performances were amazing. I'm not sure where you found these amazing artists, but they did a fabulous job. And I have to find out because I need to hear them again. Now it's time for us all to stand up. We should all stand up and say, AKG, 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 AKG. Thank you and God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome New York State Senator Sean Ryan. Holy cow, happy to be here after several long years of trying to figure this project out. Um, I've been through this project uh, several times. I, I live just around the corner. Uh, consider it really a part of my micro community. I, I walk the dog by here. I ride my bike by here. I take people by and to watch the building and the site change is just been incredible. Uh, on my walks through the site, I talk to iron workers and iron workers we're so proud of the work that they did on the stairway. I talked to the bricklayers, and they were telling me about how the terrazzo works and how the marble was affixed to the building. And I watched the interplay between the operating engineers who moved the big cranes and the glazers who were catching those big pieces of glass that they were putting up on the building. And it reminded me of the biggest game of don't break the ice ever. But you can tell you're on to something is when the people working on the site are so proud of what they're a part of. And then you know that workers on the site have brought their families by just to see what they're doing. Uh, one of the carpenters said to me, you know, I, I, we do forms for a lot of bridges and highway overpasses, but I don't really bring my family by to see that. But I bring my family by to see this beautiful piece. Um, New York State, has stepped up to the plate on this deal. Um, as Assemblywoman People Stokes mentioned, uh, it was the work of Bob Wilmers who, who put us together. And Bob was a very quiet force. And we came up with an initial tranche of funding. Uh, but then as the project grew, we had to grow our funding with it. And through the support of the Assembly Speaker, Carl Hasty and the Senate Leader, Andrea Stewart-Cousins, and our Governor, Kathy Hochul, uh, New York State has stepped up to the plate. But you know, what does that mean? That means 20 million New Yorkers believe in this project and chose to invest in this project in Buffalo. And I think that is a terrific thing. The architecture. <laughs> The architecture is something we should all be proud of. We talk often about Buffalo's architecture and our rich architecture history, but sometimes we're not quite sure if we have a rich architectural future. I think this building is going to be the inflection point that not only says Buffalo had a rich architecture past, but it's gonna be the bridge to the future for more great projects like this. And uh, Shohei, looking at the building, walking around, I could see what you were trying to do, and it works. You know, we reunited Elmwood Avenue and Buff State College with the park, could walk through it. You pay homage to nature with the reflective bridge that was formed around the existing oak trees. You get the great view of the park from that, uh, but it, it all comes together, and you can see all three generations of the AKG uh, all, all together. But we're here 
because of our past leaders and our past legacy. And I know that Louis Grouchos is here somewhere. Where is Louis Grouchos? He's over here being very quiet. But Louis was the director of the AKG. community project. This is going to be a place where the whole community can come to enjoy it and enjoy Buffalo's rich legacy. You have achieved that goal, Alice. It's been community first from the get-go, and thank you for that. <laughs> Let me talk for a second about Yanni. I got elected at the end of 2011 and Yanni came into Buffalo in 2013 and I remember my initial meetings with him and I thought, pretty unique person. He's got a vision for the Albright Knox and how it's going to grow and you could see clearly the, the benefits and the deficiencies of the first and second edition and one of the things he did say in my, our early meetings is, I don't know how it's all going to turn out, but we have to put the stairs back on. We've got your stairs back, Yanni. Uh, thank you for that. But Yanni came to Buffalo with this unique perspective. He's an you know, international person. Uh, spent a lot of time in New York City, but obviously spent a lot of time uh, in Finland and in Nordic nations. So I think Yanni delivered several things to us, but I'm most thankful that he helped us see the value of what we have. He helped us believe in ourselves. He helped us believe in culture, in creativity. He helped us see that we could have a seat at the international culture and arts table. He helped us believe that we can have excellence and that we should believe in excellence. And if you look around you today, you can see the excellence on display. Thank you, Yanni, and thank you to the great team, to AKG for delivering us what we have today. Please welcome to the stage, Erie County Executive Mark Polencars. shabby when you get welcomed by bells. That's pretty cool. It doesn't happen often to us in government. On behalf of my colleagues in county government and as well as a member of the AKG, it is my distinct honor to be here at this moment in time. You see, in every moment, history is being made by each and every one of us in everything that we do. But most moments are lost to the sands of time, almost immediately is made but not this moment. History will record a community came together to build upon the work of the past and create more than just a new building, more than a renovated art gallery, but a commitment to all alive today and the future generations to come that this place matters. Not just for the art contained therein, but on how it positively impacts the human spirit of all who go through it. Today, as you've heard, we remember and honor the prior investments made by the institution's past patrons of John J. Albright, Seymour J. Knox, and their colleagues so that we could and they could enjoy the Albright Art Gallery and then the Albright Knox Art Gallery. And as was noted, we celebrate the thousands who made today possible especially our generation's patron, Jeffrey Glimlock. 
We would not be celebrating the new Buffalo AKG Art Museum without the generosity of Jeffrey. His matching grant commitment guaranteed that this project would not only happen, but it would be the talk of the art world. And it has been, and it is. So to Jeffrey and to Barbara, thank you for investing in this museum, but as a result, the greater community of Buffalo and Erie County. We are a better community for it. Thank you. Now, I know she's not here today, but I saw her a couple days ago, and I want to thank, uh, if Jeffrey is the patron of our generation, the patron saint, and that's Jeffrey's mother, Carol. We would not be here without Carol Gunlock bringing Jeffrey to this museum a few years ago so that he could experience art in its fullest and to get that love that unfortunately we all sometimes fall in love with, which is something we just can't let go because we always want it in our lives. And that's the art that's in the Albright Knox Art Gallery in the past, the Buffalo AKG Art Museum of today, and the art that we celebrate as a community. So while she couldn't be here, I do want to thank Mrs. Gunlock for inspiring Jeffrey so that we could all have this wonderful moment today. And th <laughs> thank you to all the patrons, all the sponsors, all the partners, and the foundations who contributed to this project. It truly is remarkable when you think of everything that this community went through during the last four to five years that this was able to be pulled off. And it's because of the incredible work of so many. So thank you to all the donors and the patrons who made this a reality, including my partners in government. You'll hear from our governor very soon, but I thank her for her great commitment, as well as to our members in the Assembly and Senate for their commitment towards this project. As someone who watches what goes on in New York State government every day, I know it is not easy for them to get a commitment like they did to bring this kind of money into our community to ensure that the Buffalo AKG Art Museum could be enjoyed for generations to come, but they did it. And I want to thank them for their incredible work to do that. To the members of the Board of Directors, of course led now by Alice Jacobs, but by all the prior board chairs. Thank you for your steadfast commitment to ensuring that this project would be see-through. I remember when the first discussions were had and I had conversations with Mr. Wilmers like the majority leader did. And it wasn't, a, we, we're, we're gonna try to do this, it's we're gonna get it done. We don't know exactly how we're gonna get it done, but we're gonna get it done. So to the members of the Board of Trustees, thank you for your steadfast commitment in ensuring that this project would be done. And then, to my friend Yanni Seren and his team at the Albright Knox Gunlock Art Museum, I can't say enough. When we talk about people dedicating their lives to ensuring that a project gets done, they did. But in some ways, Yanni even went above the call of the duty because he put his life at risk. During the blizzard, during the worst conditions, when there were some problems going on here and we were telling everyone, stay inside, don't go outside, he put on his old finished cross-country skis and skied to this site to ensure that this facility would not be damaged. And he wasn't the only one who dedicated themselves to this, to the incredible team at the AKG. Thank you for all that you've done. And truthfully, during the same period, they were able to provide art to this community through the project at Northland, as well as the public art project, which never ended. While this building shut down, that continued. It was a dedication to this community that I don't know if we've seen in many other quarters before, but I want to thank the entire AKG staff, led by Director Seren. To Shohei Sigematsu and the entire team at OMA, I want to thank you for not only building a remarkable building, but one that honors the past, that embraces the neighborhood. And that's what's incredible when you walk around it. You see the entire neighborhood. It brings in the community in some ways like the Albright Knox never did before. 
And I want to thank you for building something that this community is going to be proud of for generations to come. So to all of your partners, once again, thank you, as well as to our partners in the construction industry, as was noted by Senator Ryan. There's very few times in your life when you get to build something that you know is going to stand the test of time, and this is something that is going to stand the test of time. And to the men and women of our local building trades, thank you for the work that you've done to get this done as it is today. As was noted by the congressman, the first building was supposed to be built in 1901 and didn't, and, and didn't open until 1905. So sometimes there's delays, but I'll take a couple week delay over a four week delay because of the work of the men and women of our local building trades. And then finally to all that are gathered here today, there are very few times in our life in which we can be involved in a legacy project that will positively impact future generations to come. And this truly is one of those projects. 100 years from now, the people who enjoy the Buffalo AKG Art Museum will not know who we were. Well, they won't know who Jeffrey was because his name will be on the building. They won't know who we were as a community, but they will know that we cared enough to invest in this incredible asset so that they could enjoy it decades to come. That is a legacy project that we can all be proud of no matter where we are in our lives in the future, we did something that's gonna positively impact people's lives, not just for today, but in 100 years. And we can all be proud of it. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mayor of the City of Buffalo, Byron Brown. The opening of the Buffalo AKG Art Museum is a dream come true for the city of Buffalo. Thank you, Jeffrey Gunlock, for your extraordinary gift that made this dream come true. I also want to recognize your lovely wife, Barbara. Let's give them another round of applause. To Alice Jacobs, board chair, all of the members of the board of directors, Yane Seren, all of the members of the staff, thank you for your dedication and your hard work in steering this project to completion. And you can clap for them as well. <laughs> Architect show. Hey, Sigematsu, thank you for this beautiful design. And I am also a proud graduate of Buffalo State College, a professor at the university, uh, but also a former basketball player at Buffalo State. And as a basketball player, we talked a little stuff on the court. Buffalo, it is okay to be very proud and just a little bit braggadocious about this world-class design, this world-class museum. And Shohei, we would call this museum in the art world and in the world of architecture, the show. <laughs> A lot, of, a lot of ingredients, a lot of materials have gone into building the Buffalo AKG Art Museum, but perhaps no material more important than inclusion. Alice Jacobs, yes. Alice Jacobs and Yane spoke about their passion for inclusion. Itina's poem was all about inclusion. I want to thank them and congratulate them on an amazing, 
public engagement process that brought people in from all across the city of Buffalo, all across western New York, to share their vision and their dreams for what this museum would be. The time that we're living in right now, there are people from all across the world that are searching for and dreaming of their place in the world. The Buffalo AKG Art Museum has been designed as a world-class museum. Yes, that's important. But more than that, a place in the world for all people, where all people can see themselves, where all people can be comfortable, a place where people will want to be. This museum is a powerful example, Buffalo, a powerful example of what can be accomplished when we work together, when we dream big, and when we make our dreams come true. I want to end by sharing a poem with you by the poet Langston Hughes, entitled Dreams. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. Congratulations, Buffalo. Thank you, Mayor Brown. As you have heard, this project would not have been possible without the generous, enduring support of New York State, led by a great public servant who hails from Western New York. Governor Kathy Hochul is a steadfast leader who believes in the power of art and culture to transform communities. Thank you, Governor Hochul, for leading the great state of New York to a better, more prosperous future. You are amazing. This is what speechless looks like. I am speechless at the breath of beauty that surrounds this place, far beyond my expectations when I was first shown the plans by a very enthusiastic new leader of this institution. Yanni used every chance he could to invite me over just for a cup of coffee or a little conversation, want to see the latest art piece. And every single time, what else do you need now, Yanni? How can we get this done? And the vision that you and Alice showed me a number of years ago, I was a lieutenant governor. I said, I'll do my best, but to be governor and be able to answer the call for more help, working with our great legislators, it was one of the most pr proudest days of my life to say, yes, we can get this done. So I thank Yanni and Alice and so many others who came before in a very persuasive way. But I have one thing to tell you. You had me at hello. <laughs> I've been a member since my family brought me here as a child. I had a family membership when my kids were just toddlers, so you had me already. I just enjoyed the visits. Uh, 
So to Yanni and Alice and, of course, Jeffrey Gunlock, I had a chance to say hello to your mom and your family and Barbara. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is so extraordinary. And yes, you could have spent the money in some faraway place called California, but I don't think their governor could have, been felt, could have felt the depth of gratitude that I have here today. So this is personal. This is my home. So thank you. And to our leaders, Brian Higgins, Crystal People Stokes, Sean Ryan, Mark Polencars, Byron Brown. My God, are they eloquent. Every single one of you lift our spirits with your words and their different perspectives on what this day means to you. And I thank you for being my partners, but also for being here today. I don't want to overlook NISCA, uh, the Council on the Arts, for the 700,000. Can't say no to 700,000, right? To Catherine Nichols, our chair, and Mara McManus, I want to thank them for what they've done as well. I also, I know I don't play basketball, Mayor. I don't think I'm ever going to really play basketball. Do I, I do shoot around a little bit at the mansion. Um, I'm a little vertically challenged, but that's all right. Uh, but I do like music. And with respect to, and apologies, I would say to Prince and later the Bangles, this is just another magic Monday. <laughs> because last Monday, we showed the world the new home of America's most beloved football team. This Monday, we show the world the home of the most, the most unique and extraordinary art collections this country has ever seen. I can't wait till next Monday. <laughs> As we gather here, you think about the 1905 building. I'm sure this lawn was filled with people who were so anxious to come here, coming in their carriages, bringing their families, having picnics, saying, my gosh, what an incredible ode to the past. It harkens the days of glory from the Greeks and the Romans and the architecture at its finest. Then in 1962, another governor, not from Buffalo, uh, but Nelson Rockefeller was able to see and witness this extraordinary building, and he was an art lover like no other. I didn't realize as I moved into the governor's residence about a year and a half ago that Picasso's Guernica had graced the halls of the governor's residence when he was, when he was governor. That's a lot of clout. I don't have it anymore. <laughs> But I'd certainly take anything on loan that I can showcase. I'm going to do that. I want to, I want to show off the work. So just another hint here. Uh, but today, the confluence of these buildings that reflect a different period of time, this just says one thing. Buffalo, we've made our mark. We've arrived. This means something, not today, but as you've heard from our speakers, for generations to come. Because it says, Buffalo, you're a place that matters. Your place to people from around the world to be talking about, as they should be. What well, we have in architecture, second to none, culture and arts and diversity. Nobody can hold a candle to this place. A little more crudely, we really punch above our weight. But I travel this state. I spent a lot of time in New York City. Everybody has heard of this art gallery. And the new rebranding, the Buffalo AKG, is also well known. Now my job as governor is to make sure that it's not just known in the art world or among us proud Buffalonians, but I want this to continue to be a draw for more tourists who maybe think in the first stop is New York City. That's great, go to New York City, see a play, just saw the Tonys. But make your way up here. There's a little nice place called Niagara Falls down the road too. You might want to see one of the world's, world's greatest wonders, but this is truly one of the world, world's greatest wonders right here in Buffalo. So let's not forget that. Let's be proud. Let's remember that no matter what people say and what we've been through, and you've heard it all, it's been a rough, rough year for us. But what a culmination that demonstrates the human spirit of this community in this magnificent building. So I open with a song. I want to close with, I'm not singing it. 
Buffalo, don't stop believing. Don't stop believing in tomorrow because better days are still ahead, but today is a milestone that none of us for the rest of our lives will ever forget. Congratulations to everyone who made the magic happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Hochul, and thank you so much to all our extraordinary elected officials for your support. Without you, we would not have been able to reach this historic moment. I want to take this, I would like to take this moment to thank my colleagues, the incredible, brilliant, and tireless staff of the Buffalo AKG. All of you here, please stand up and wave. I've had the privilege to work with two deputy directors during my time here, Dr. Joe Lynn Hill and now Jillian Jones. I couldn't do the work I do without you. Thank you for being at my side, at the side of our team. You are incredible. I also want to recognize two staff members who officially work for OMA, but actually they work for me, and that's Paxton Sheldahl and Lawrence Sue. Please stand up. These are amazing architects. They're somewhere here. <laughs> All of you have devoted thousands of hours of hard work to bring us to this transformative point in time, this moment when, as a museum, we will become the future. Your work is what makes the Buffalo AKG the welcoming and inspiring museum that we have always aspired to be. Thank you for challenging me every day to be a better person. Over the last three and a half years, hundreds of talented, skilled workers have built this campus we see around us under the leadership of our building partner, Gilbane Building Company, and with the support of our owner's representative, ARC Building Partners. Thank you, Gilbane. Thank you, ARC. And thank you, Vince. <laughs> On behalf of the Buffalo AKG and the people of Western New York, I thank you for your work. The fruits of your labor, as has been noted, have changed the fabric of our environment for generations to come. You are artists in your own right, and it has been a privilege to work alongside you, sometimes literally alongside you, to bring this project to completion. I would also like to thank the brave artists who give the Buffalo AKG its raison d'etre. You are our guiding light, and we aspire to share your creations with the world. For our final performance of the day, we will again hear from the incredibly talented Vox Fortura. In a few moments, in a few moments, they will sing Heroes by David Bowie. Bowie first recorded Heroes in 1977 in East Berlin. The song tells the story of two lovers who meet at the Berlin Wall and try hopelessly to find a way to be together. Bowie returned to Berlin in 1987 to perform in a three-day open-air concert in front of the Reichstag. The song he chose to share with the thousands of Berliners yearning for a freer world was Heroes. Two years later, the Berlin Wall would fall. Of course, a vast and complex web of historical forces led to the fall of the Berlin Wall. But when Bowie died in 2016, the German Foreign Ministry credited him and this performance with helping to harden these forces of history and remove the barriers, physical, philosophical, and ideological, that divide us. 
Art brings us together, it empowers us, it inspires us, and it changes the world. Without further ado, please join me in wel welcoming Vox Fortura.
We also need John Moreau, Jonathan Rivera, Christina Orsi, Jason Cataret, Lawrence Sue, Northrop Knox, and Mimi Trujillo. If you would please proceed to the stage to get a pair of scissors. heads up. Everybody please look toward the podium. Nice big smiles. <laughs> um, when I count down, I 